Hi, this is Alicia, and we are live. Welcome to the Google Hangout. We are talking with business book professionals. These are authors, speakers, coaches, TV personalities who are using their book as a way to build their business. Uh, we are live now, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually be sharing with you uh, how our life was before we wrote a book and what opportunities and things are happening since writing a book. We're going to share with you our successes, how a book has literally changed our business and opened up new opportunities for us. But we're also going to discuss some of the mistakes that we made, things that went wrong, some of the fears that we had, uh, and how we can help you avoid those. So I really want this to be a candid discussion, a discussion amongst uh, business professionals uh, to help you maybe make the decision if writing a book is something for you. I have a feeling that uh, the women on the line, we have all women today, I have a feeling that these women are going to share with you some exciting things that will make you want to write a book. I definitely look forward to discussing this with them to see how much a book has changed their life. Uh, some of the uh, people on the line are our clients, uh, and so it's really exciting. I always share with my, um, with my community uh, client success stories, so it's always coming from my mouth. It's really exciting to hear from their mouth today how they have been successful by writing a book. So I really want to use this as an opportunity to get started. So first of all, we have a lot of people on the line. And what I want everyone to do is to introduce themselves and to mention the title of their book and how specifically, what was the day they decided to write a book and why did they decide to write a book? So why don't we get started with uh, Fran Harris? Hi, everybody. I'm Fran Harris. I'm in uh, Austin, Texas. And really excited. Can we hear Fran? Can we hear Fran? <laughs> can we hear me? Oh, we can hear Fran. I'm not hearing. Fran. I hear her. Oh, good. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, so uh, I'm in Austin, Texas. Glad to be on board today, talking about. Um, how a book is written. The first book I wrote, I was actually in graduate school at the University of Texas at Austin, and my team had just won its first national championship. And I decided to write a book because that was a great time in my life. I wanted people to understand what it was like to be on a national championship basketball team. So for me, the, the motivation for writing that book was really just to capture a special time in my life. But what I didn't realize was that that book was going to allow me to get interviewed in newspapers and on television to talk about what it meant to build a championship team. So for me, being, a, being an author has really changed my life because it's given me that platform to, to talk on television and radio and to go into corporations and talk about the things that I have expertise in. And, and one of those was building a championship team. Excellent. Good stuff. And Heidi Sloss, tell about that day you decided to write a book and what your book is about. Hi, Heidi Sloss here from Northern California. And um, I want to say it was November 2010. And I was at a networking event and I got to hear Alicia give a presentation about writing a book. And frankly, it was the end of 2010. And I thought my strategy for 2011 was going to be to get into video and TV. And that was what I was going to play with. And I heard Alicia talk about writing a book and how it would change my life. And I got inspired. And I signed up to take her course. And it was the best thing I ever did. I really, um, I can't even begin to tell you about how my life has changed. And I can't say it's all related to just writing the book, but all sorts of things happened all together in 2011. One is I wrote the book. It became a bestseller. It's called Fortune is in the Follow-Up. Five Power Strategies to Reinvent Your Marketing. And um, along with all the publicity and all of the hoopla of becoming a best-selling author, I decided I needed to change my life big time. And I lost 55 pounds. And I, I can't even come up with the number, but I went from asking less than $1,000 for speaking event to now $5,000 for, for opening your mail. And that's like huge. That is just huge. Awesome. Thank you so much, Heidi. And let's talk to Chris now. Chris, what's Hi. the name of your book? And talk a little bit about why you made the decision to write a book. Absolutely. 
My name is Chris Gilberts, and I'm here in Denver, Colorado, and my current book title is Podcasting 2.0, How to Generate More Free Traffic and Leads for Your Business by Partnering with iTunes. But the first reason I started to write a book was because I was transitioning from real estate. I've been in real estate for seven years, and I was getting into the expert space, and I didn't have any credibility yet, and I wanted to create a lead generation tool. So I created a book that was just the 10 secrets of the extraordinarily successful and used that as a lead magnet to actually capture leads and actually grow my credibility and expert status that way. And it was phenomenal because it was amazing to understand how I could help them with um, with my business and what I was doing podcasting, but really get them to engage with me. So it worked, worked incredibly well. And now I'm actually taking it to the next level with working with Alicia on actually getting it out in print with my new book and my new expert space now. Excellent, thank you so much, Chris. And Leanne. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? The only one whose name tag isn't working. <laughs> well, we don't use technology, so we're just working with what we have. Exactly. Uh, well, my name is Leanne Gray. Chuck and I uh, actually it's so funny I met Alicia online maybe eight years ago we were doing similar um, events actually I'm in Toronto and I ended up oftentimes just giving tips to friends about wealth creation and little tips for um, moving forward in into a more abundant life and I I just decided that you know what instead of always talking about all of the things that I had experienced why not put it together in an ebook? So I had done that, and then many people were asking me if it was available in hard copies. So that's when I connected with Alicia um, to actually implement a simple ebook that I had created, expanded into a hard copy. And um, then what I could do was I would be able to um, put it on Amazon, and it became an Amazon bestseller. Excellent. Good awesome. stuff. So, specifically, I know we have someone wanting to get in the Google chat, but again, technology, we don't have Anna Maria who really can see her video, but uh, uh, her picture's there, and uh, <laughs> and she's had amazing, amazing uh, changes with her business, and I know recently, uh, Anna Maria, who is the author, Anna Maria Sanchez, who's the author of Girl from the Hood, Gone Good, wrote her book, became a bestseller, and was as recently spoke uh, for the United Nations in New York City on the atrocities against women uh, and domestic abuse. So, you know, just uh, clap to Anna Maria how amazing that is. And we're, we, I know we see your picture, you're here with us in spirit. Uh, so I want to go specifically back down the panel and talk about uh, how, what actual, I want to really get into the, you know, the real banalities of how a business, uh, how your book has really increased your business, whether it's profits, we've mentioned TV. I want to know specifically, because there's people listening to us right now saying, you know, I want to write a book. What's going to happen? So, Fran, let's start with you. Specifically, right. uh, you know, how has it changed your business? I want specifics here. Well, you know, when you go speak, I speak all over the country, all over the world, actually. When you go speak and you come off the stage, the first thing people ask, and you all know this, is, where's your book? How can I consume you? So I find that a book has given me, as one of the panelists mentioned, that, that kind of lower-end, affordable entryway into consuming me as a coach, as an expert. So it's added, you know, incrementally, the first year, when I wrote that book in, in the mid-'90s, my book about our the dream season about our championship team, you know, the, the financial realities was it cost a lot of money to, to print up a thousand copies of that book, you know, something like four grand. And um, of course, that's not the case today, but I mean, immediately I made $5,000 just selling that book. So obviously, financially, it changes you, but obviously, when you walk onto a stage or walk off a stage and you've got decision makers in the audience, the first thing they want to know is, what is where is your book? because that gives them something tangible to take back to their CEO to say, hey, she's written this book or he's written this book on this topic. So for some reason, people think when you write a book, you must really know what you're talking about, and I'm good with that with that assumption as well. Excellent, good. Uh, and, um, oh, we see that we have Anna Maria here. Let's just- Yay! Uh, are you there, Anna Maria? Oh, you're, okay, we're still figuring out the audio on that. So let's go back to Heidi. We'll get to, uh, we'll get to Anna Maria. Uh, so let's, Get back to uh, Heidi. So Heidi, how specifically, I want to talk about what you were doing back in 2011 and what you are doing now with your business. So 
uh, it's a great question about what, what the change has been in writing a book. Um, well, I hear a lot of noise there. I, I hope people can hear me. Um, before writing the book, I was uh, seeing a lot of clients individually. A lot of one-to-one -one, um, working with businesses and individuals to help them improve their performance, help them with their marketing, putting a marketing plan together, and generally improving the um, effectiveness of them as, as running their businesses. And since writing the book, I see very few people and very few companies individually, and much more um, my focus is as a keynote pre presenter. So I uh, come in and I do presentations from one to, to four or five hours a day, and um, I get to speak to whole departments. And I find it's much more energizing to me, much more effective uh, way for me to uh, deliver my message. And um, having the book means that someone, as Fran was saying, in the audience can hear me, uh, take the book and then take it back to their organizations and then bring me in because of the book. The book is is more than an electronic or uh, hard copy business card. It is, uh, as Fran says, it demonstrates my credibility. And um, I just, uh, I can't imagine what my business would be like without the book. And yeah. it has opened up way more doors than I ever even realized were possible. Um, I know I wouldn't be considered to be a, a presenter at um, half of the presentations and companies that I got to be in front of last year without the book. And, and, and Heidi, I know when you saw me at that networking event back in November 2010 and decided to work with me in a bestseller in a weekend, you, were, you were, had a model of your business where you were a business coach and you know, charging hourly for your business advice. And you said to me, Alicia, I want to be a keynote speaker. And that's what I'm really excited about today is because you're traveling all around, you've been to Vegas, New York, as a keynote speaker. And so that's really exciting that your model changed from a one-on-one -on -one model that we talk about to a one-to-many model where corporations are now your clients versus uh, individual small business owners. Alicia, let me tell you, I mean, so last November, so that was two years after I met you, last November I got invited to a retreat up in Sonoma for the top sales agents for an international company to be their keynote presenter for half the day. At, you know, it was both a reward and a motivation for them to, to do even better. And they would never have even considered me without the book. And the book fed into not just d demonstrating my credibility, I always knew I knew what I was talking about, but it helped me realize I knew what I was talking about. And, and you've remarked on this. There's an air of confidence that has come from uh, being able to say, here, here's my book. And um, so now when I take the stage, I feel great. I feel absolutely great. That's great because I think what a book forces you to do is take what's up here and productize it. It, it, it forces you. What people have said to me is, uh, when they attend Best Seller on a weekend or when they sit down to write their book, it really forces them to think about what are the takeaways of my business? What are the results people have when they work with me? What solutions am I providing as a business owner? And so it takes what's up here that's scrambling around and helps you organize it and focus it where your book can become a seminar, can become a training, can be a paid webinar series. So you're really taking what's up here and putting it in an organized fashion. So let's go to Chris now and, and talk about specifically how has a book really you know, led to profits in your business and specific, uh, specific deliverables in that way. Absolutely. Just like what Heidi talked about with creating the confidence and, and what you just talked about, this, my book from launching my 10 secrets of extraordinarily successful people as a lead generation tool. I was just launching my podcast and my business and I didn't have my first product offering yet. Then when I realized well, the one number one reason that's right with the book is it creates leverage. So we're out there talking with people, always explaining our benefits about our business. And we're doing this over and over and over again. A book leverages that just like what Fran talked about as well. It's people want to consume that. 
So when I put that book together for the second time now, which is why now how to or why now is the time to podcast, that became my first product offering, which I turned into now a digital course that people have instant access to a membership. So I was able to monetize my knowledge and take it from the one to one model to the one to many model. And it was easy because it was laid out in the book exactly what to do. And that's when the epiphany happened. Oh, this is a digital product. This is exactly now my first product offering that has enabled me to go global. And what's great about it too is my book from using that as a lead capture, as an ethical offer for people to opt into my website. I had clients in Australia contacting me to want to work with me in England in all over the world to go through my course because of that book. And they saw the logical order of progression of how I could help them. So the logical next step was for them to become a client. So it's been absolutely phenomenal to actually reach a global audience and reach people with who are really interested in what I have to offer. And what I love the best is where people say, you are exactly who I've been looking for. I love when I get that because my hard work has paid off because I put it in a way that people are excited to connect with me. And it's fun for me and it's exactly what they need and it's a win-win. So that's been the biggest benefit for me. That's excellent. You pointed, uh, you mentioned a couple of great points out right there. Uh, first, I want to quickly say that we are in a global economy. And I always mention, you know, everyone in the world can own your book, but can everyone in the world own one of your hours or purchase one of your hours or work with you? No, it's not scalable. It's not, your time is not scalable. So you're writing a book is really the first level of creating what I call like your bestseller profit funnel. It's the first level. It's a product. And when you create that product, then you can repurpose it in different ways. And as Chris, as you mentioned, repurpose it in other information products. Uh, we're in a global economy, and it's very exciting because we can have clients from all over the world, and everyone can purchase our book. So, Leanne, I want to specifically talk to you on how, because I know you have uh, a really booming business. Uh, and you work with uh, community leaders to build your business. I want to talk specifically how a book has helped you uh, create your community of leaders and, and what's going on there for you. Hold on one sec. Make sure you're not muted. Can we hear Leanne? Can you hear me now okay? Yes, we can. Yep. Great. Well, I think we all agree now that a book is really the new business card. And so, I, I mean, I can't mention enough how many doors opened when I had my book published. Um, you know, I was, I was on TV shows, um, a lot more speaking engagements. And for me, it was also a really great way, exactly like you said, for people that I couldn't reach, like people in Scandinavia. Navia, New Zealand, that potentially uh, wouldn't be able to come to one of my events, but were definitely able to get some insights to help grow their business from just getting a copy of my book. So, um, you know, radio, television, much more speaking engagements, and again, this year, um, traveling around the world with about 15 speaking engagements already booked. So a book has been one of my, the key factors to me. Really, I love to travel and one of my passions, I was able to really mesh my passion with my business. So it's it's been amazing. And it's a word in your new mother, which I just found out about. And that's the, yes. having, having a book is a way to make money um, and be a, a stay at home mother and also have a, a, a online business. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, it's amazing. It's, it allows me to, to write while I'm home and um, to do a lot more on the internet, which is great. Excellent. So now we're going to try Anna Maria. Let's see if we can hear you all right. Are you there, Anna Maria? Oh, you sound like uh, Mickey Mouse. Here, let's try again. <laughs> okay, we're going to come. Let's see, try again. Yeah, there's something with the. Within it. So we'll have to come back to, and I'll just give um, Anna Marie. I really wish we could we could hear you. We'll try again once you work on on the technology aspect. But again, Anna Marie is the author of Girl from the Hood, Gone Good, and she appears on TV. It seems like every week now, local TV. She is speaking uh, also at uh, local spiritual bookstores. Uh, she's created some joint ventures with uh, spiritual bookstores. Is becoming like a best-selling author in these local bookstores has spoken for the United Nations, uh, so doing a lot of amazing things by writing a book. And I think uh, specifically she wrote a book to attract clients like many of us do. Uh, but what has come from it is a bigger message, a thought mo movement, if you will. 
uh, and I see that as such a beautiful as such a beautiful thing. So hopefully we can get her technology working. So now I want to talk a little bit about uh, the mistakes that uh, you made uh, when writing a book. Maybe some of the fears that you had. I want to help everyone at home avoid those mistakes. Uh, so Fran, when you started writing your book and first wrote your book, what are some of the mistakes that, that you made? Well, I think I think about now. I mean, for me, writing that first book, um, you know, my twenties was actually exactly what I wanted to do. I was thinking, I don't really care if anybody reads it, you know, that kind of thing. It was less of an economic decision. Today, I think one of the things that that I find myself thinking about that I'm not just writing this book just because I want to read it. I got thousands of books. You need to write a book that people want to read. And so I think early in my career, it was more of I'm going to write this book for posterity just because I want to read it, just because I want to see it, and really didn't think about, okay, is there a market for this book? Is there a buying community for this book? And I think some authors still have that, that uh, mentality of, I'm going to write this book because it feels good for me. Nothing wrong with that. But then they're also disappointed when nobody buys the book. So I think for me, I've shifted from going, okay, I, I'm going to write this book because it feels good and because I've always wanted to write about this topic to first, let's do the research. Let me make sure that there's a buying community for it and then I'll write the book. So I'd have to say mistake is not researching, not understanding that you want book buyers honestly, before you write the book, unless you're just writing the book for comfort for yourself. Absolutely. That's one thing that I talk about. You want to really create your target audience and those, that audience of book buyers before you even begin writing your book. And yeah. that's, you want to write a book for them in particular. One thing we do during Best Seller in a Weekend is we start pre-marketing your book before you even start writing yeah. it. Start building that community, building that tribe, getting people even part of the book writing process. I call it the crowdsourcing of your book, helping having other people give you ideas on what your book cover should look like, uh, what the title of your book should be. So you start creating that environment of anticipation that they are vested and they are excited about your book coming out. Okay, good one. And Heidi, talk about some mistakes that uh, that you made and what you learned from so we can educate those folks on the, on the uh, call. Oh honey, I make so many mistakes, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, I think the first mistake I made um, was thinking that even if I wrote a book, who would be interested in it? And it's, it's kind of like what Fran was saying, but a little more personal of having the confidence that people would actually be interested. And so what that meant was that I did not start singing from the rooftops early and often about my book, which I should have done right away. I mean, I, I should have walked out of bestseller in a weekend um, and started telling everybody I know I was writing this book and I had written this book. But the problem was I didn't believe inside I would really get it done. I didn't, I didn't trust that even if I got it done that anyone would pay any attention. And um, that was a whole shift in my mind that, that I needed to do in, in, in putting this together. And so when people ask me now what I recommend they do if they're writing a book is don't worry about writing. Don't worry about the content. There's so many great ideas out there to, to generate content. Start telling everybody you know that you're writing the book and tell them what it's about and show them a, a cover. Have a, a beautiful cover. And in fact, having a great cover helped me attract someone who I had admired for decades to get involved with my book. Um, I uh, really wanted to have some top-notch marketing people in the world comment on the book, review the book, participate. I interviewed different industry experts and I wanted one in particular um, and that was Jay Levinson who wrote Guerrilla Marketing and I, I just spent months wanting him and not doing a thing about it. And finally, I had my assistant send off a, an email that I constructed, and it had an attachment that had the cover of my book. And uh, the response back from Jay's people were that he was too busy, but they would still forward it on to him. And less than 48 hours later, I got an email back from him telling me that he loved the concept and he couldn't wait to participate. I got to interview him, and then he loved the interview process so much that he wanted to review the book. And, and I never... I never dreamed that somebody of that caliber would be interested and I really should have been working on that 
from day one and less worried about coming up with the number of pages and the number of words and the content because that's that's all possible and 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 that was actually the minor part um, the other thing that I, that I did was um, I really started thinking about who did I know in the media who did I have contacts with and I don't have and didn't have a lot of TV contacts but I'm hoping to Fran um, <laughs> but at the time I wrote the book I had um, a great contact with somebody who was on local San Francisco uh, radio and um, he graciously allowed me to appear on his show the night before my book launch and he had a great following and I believe that his the pub, the publicity and and attention I got because of his radio show really helped catapult my book into becoming number one on Amazon for most of that first week and that was that was quite cool and the third thing that I want to say is about a mistake I didn't make it I, I it was one of the few things I did really right and that was that I I chose to use uh, and and have a publisher and I know that there's a lot of people out there talking about and how easy it is to actually self-publish and I think people can self-publish but for me the credibility and the doors that I wanted open needed to have uh, my book needed to have a publisher and that really makes a big difference and I work in subtly that that into my conversations that I have a publisher and people look at my book with even more credibility gives it more credibility and believe more in the book than if it was a self-published book. So I would tell people, do not self-publish if you want to use this for book cre uh, business credibility and help um, attract clients and catapult you up. Yes, you make some important points there because the good news about self-publishing, it, it gives everyone the opportunity to get their content and distribute it via Amazon and get in the hands of people worldwide. So it's uh, definitely a great equalizer there. But the decision makers, like TV producers, event planners, etc., they want um, a, a bar there, uh, some 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 other third party that has vetted the book uh, for quality uh, and that it's published has a publisher, and so there's a bit of a, a cachet around that. And I would say that's the biggest difference between going with a traditional publisher or even uh, one of these hybrid entrepreneur presses or vanity publishers is it gives you that bit of cachet so decisions ma makers feel like they're making a good decision. Oh, this person is published. Now, I don't want that pr to preclude anyone from self-publishing because self-publishing is definitely a way to get your, get your book out there. I don't want anything to prevent you from getting your book out there. But if you do have the choice and you can work with a, a, a vanity publisher or entrepreneurial hybrid type publisher, that would be the way to go. Also, they will give you the support that you need. Now, if traditional publishing is something that you want to do, um, that's a whole other uh, uh, bag of potatoes because uh, you are looking at showing them that you have enough platform to sell 30,000 books on your own. Uh, they want to see that you have hundreds of thousands of people following you on Twitter and Facebook and that you do have a platform. I've had clients who've come to me and, and they have a platform and I've said, you know, so you could definitely publish with a traditional publisher. They haven't either been interested or uh, they rather just do it themselves. So you have a lot of options in terms of publishing. One thing that I do note about traditionally publishing is your book. Um, I'm all about you know being the first to market with, with your idea and publishing it takes at least a year to 18 months to get what's up here um, out there and distributed and self-publishing is the quicker way to do that. So a lot of choices here. The good news is uh, during Best Seller in a Weekend I have people who want to self-publish a Kindle and get it up there uh, as a way to maybe feed their internet marketing business. I have people who with agents because at the end of the day, Amazon, your agent, and your traditional publisher is not going to write your book. They will distribute it for you. They'll give you the opportunity in the container once your book is written. But at the end of the day, you must write your book. Uh, and so I was on a radio interview just this morning, and, and someone was talking about Amazon. I'm like, Amazon gives you the distribution channels. Uh, they give you all the marketing tools to get your book out there, but they don't help you write your book. The same with having an agent or traditional publisher. So you've got to get it done already. And a special note to Heidi is uh, the last time I looked up Fortune is in the follow-up on Google, you came number one. 
uh, and it brings back millions of search results, but your book comes back number one. This was the last time I looked. And so can I tell you what that did? So just yesterday, actually, I sat down with a gal who was a student um, at, I want to say, some university in Minnesota, University of Minnesota, something like that. I can't quite remember the school. She had looked me up and found me as a um, speaker for a, a conference that I attended and gave a, a keynote for um, locally on social media and business strategy. Then she Googled me and found me as number one um, uh, uh, for my book. And then she interviewed me yesterday um, as a case study for herself as uh, in this entrepreneurial program. So it, it just goes out like um, a, a river with many branches and touches all sorts of things you have no idea about until they start coming home. Yes, Google prioritizes Amazon. So if Google sees that someone is keywording uh, a certain term like fortune is in the follow up, they're going to make sure they bring back a product for that person. You come back number one for that term, which is a very popular term, fortune yeah. is in the follow up. Well, and the other thing I did was I copyrighted it, but that's a whole other story. We won't go there. I want to go back to something Fran said, though. Fran said something really uh, very intelligent that I think that um, made a difference for me in thinking about my book, and that was strategizing who do you want to touch? Who do you want to reach? Who is, who is the audience for this book? And, you know, you asked about mistakes. For me, it's the, the same kind of thing. When I was thinking of marketing, I actually went into Bestseller in the Weekend thinking I'd write a different book than I walked out thinking I would write because I changed the audience. And that's, that's really huge. And I think a lot of people think they're going to just start writing the book before they start thinking, who is the audience I want to be reaching? And is this strategically the right book to do that? And that's just huge if you're going to use your book to help your business. Absolutely. Who's your target audience? What's their pain point and how do you solve it? That's the whole basis, the foundation of, of writing a book. You want to be found online. You want to be found on Amazon and it doesn't really do you any good to write a 400 page book on some broad term like social media uh, when you can get really niche and focused on the target audience that you want to serve. Now with that I want to go to uh, Chris and talk about what are some of the mistakes that you made when writing your book and how can we learn from that? The biggest mistake is that I didn't do it sooner and I didn't do it in the real estate market before because it could have given me a lot more uh, status and clout and been able to attract even a bigger audience through what I was doing. I did it the hard way. But also I think what's really important too is that people have shifted. Like you always talk about Alicia, we're in the scan economy and people are looking for, they have problems, they're motivated by their pain more than pleasure. And we don't have to write like a 300 page book. That's what I always yeah. tell back is I'm like, I'm not an expert yet. I don't have enough knowledge. Who's going to listen to this? It's not like that anymore. It's very, if you can target exactly what their pain is, and even if it's a 30 page book, and that's a lead magnet, I, I go back to that a lot, but you can use Amazon as a way to create that status for you and then work with a uh, publisher in the future and create a bigger book. But it at least grants that authority for you gets you on Google and then you can actually use that in Amazon. So I, I, what I really want to portray here is that everybody is an expert. You're an expert to somebody. You have phenomenal knowledge and it doesn't have to be packaged in a huge 400 page book. So if you can keep it simple for yourself to get started, I think that's the best. I wish I had done that and just, just done it and got it started and moved forward and, and just uh, did it. <laughs> Good. Yeah, as you mentioned, I, I said we're we're in the uh, we have we're in the global economy, obviously, where we can reach everyone in the world with our book. We are in the search economy, where people search you on Google before they're going to give you money. So, what comes up on Google? Does your book and all of the TV shows that you've been on and uh, the speaking engagements? You want to make sure that you are searchable. And Amazon is the number one retail search engine with a hundred million buyers. One click buyers, that means they have all their credit card information, they are ready to buy. When people don't find you on Amazon, they're going to assume you don't exist. Uh, and we're in the scan economy, as I mentioned, that people are scanning. They love bullet points. Three, people learn by three, fives, and sevens. So if you can give them the seven tips, seven hot social media tips for lawyers, uh, that, fee, that again serves that market. Uh, it does someone a disservice. Uh, if I remember someone saying, I want to write a real estate book that targets uh, ret uh, retirees. So a retiree has a different set of needs than someone who's just out of college and buying their first home. 
they have a different set of needs. So no reason to write a whole broad book on real estate when you can target retirees who are looking to buy real estate because their needs are different. So we're in the scan economy as well. And Leanne would love to learn what some of your mistakes that you made uh, when writing a book so we can learn at home. And let's make sure that you are unmuted. Can we hear you now? Yeah. So I, I think everybody's saying something similar. I wish I did it sooner. Uh, I wrote the ebook version of my book when I was 29, and I honestly wish I would have. If I knew how, we, sometimes people think it's so difficult, but if, if I knew how simple it was, yes, you have to be a little patient because there is a process, like you mentioned. But it's very simple to write, and uh, I mean, it's been probably the greatest business tool to date in my business. Mistakes that I made, I would say number one, if you do have a vision of being a global business, or if you have a vision of speaking globally, I would highly recommend thinking about translating your book in at least one language in the beginning. Because now I'm faced with a situation where I'm now running my workshops in uh, in France, and my book is not available in French. So it is a little bit of a challenge because they really want a French version. I would put I'm going to put that in my next book in my marketing plan from the beginning. The second thing that I would also recommend is if you are speaking at large conferences or you have a vision to speak at large conferences make sure at least three months before the conference you make sure that they have enough copies of your book that was another challenge I had I spoke at one event that was over 10,000 people and they had only purchased enough I think like 200 copies of my book mm. so that is another you know note to self I pre-plan a lot better and whoever's hosting the conference normally they do sell products I tend to not want to take care of bringing my own books I like events where they take care of purchasing them but I like to t touch base with them to make sure that they have enough copies and that they don't run out so if you are a speaker that's another lesson that I learned excellent Good. you know Alicia one of the things I would add to what Leanne said is you know, if you're just testing your book, let's say you are testing the topic and you want to do that digitally. We live in such a great economy right now that you can test it digitally and see what the marketplace says. And then if you go, as Leanne said, to speak at a big conference, you can get those ordered at 48hourbooks.com or someplace like that and have a thousand order that you don't even have to pay for. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of ways that you can kind of defray the cost of publishing because of such a great time that we live in in 2013 that you don't have to actually be burdened with the expense of publication for your book. Absolutely, you test it digitally and then you sell the books before you print them. That's right. <laughs> you this conference is gonna buy a thousand. That's and right. And then you purchase them once you get the, get the check from them. Absolutely. Thank you. I wanna personally add one of the mistakes that I made. Now, I wrote my book back in 2007 called Goal, G-O-A-L, Digger, Lessons Learned from the Rich Men I Dated. Uh, again, it's a small <laughs> <laughs> Everyone on the call knows this at Gold Digger. And mm -hmm. I really, and, and Heidi knows, and Leanne, I've you know, known uh, you for a few years now. And when I wrote my book, I didn't know what I was doing. I, at that point, back in 2007, really print on demand wasn't, wasn't happening. You still printed your book and then sent it to the Amazon warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, so you had, actually had to have physical books. And and um, I'm going to just mute someone really quickly so I hear some feedback. And then uh, with that, I um, I spent thir I spent almost thirty thousand dollars with the writing and publishing, but most of that was with the publicist. I spent I had a monthly retainer with a publicist, and to me, I think back on that, and when I think about uh, the decisions I made when I wrote a book, I would say that that was the worst decision I made. Um, the reason why is because that publicist got me two, I think two or maybe one and a half radio interviews, and <laughs> and I spent I think at least fifteen to twenty thousand with that. Ouch. And, and and I now I have TV producers, you know, there's social media producers, people contacting me. I have friends who are uh, all the major TV and radio interviews I have gotten 
has been through networking or social media. So I tell my clients that a publicist, you be your own publicist, and really TV producers are looking online. They're Googling, they're looking online to find go-to experts. And I actually was on Great Day Houston, and I networked with a woman who had a book called uh, On Your Own Two Feet. It was a financial guide for women. And she was on the show, and she told the host about me, and the host called me up a couple days later. That's how I got on Great Day Houston. I, I got on, I was just recently on the Steve Harvey show. Uh, the TV producer from Great Day Houston found me via social media again and, and found my email and contacted me to be on the show. The Ricky Lake show, I was on the Ricky Lake show through social media and a social media uh, community and, and basically some of my friends on social media who connected me. And so networking is really the best way to get on TV and radio. So I would say save your tens of thousands of dollars on a publicist and do it yourself. Another case in point is one of my clients who uh, has a seven-figure business and you know has the money to, to spend on a publicist. He was working with a publicist and he said he was not happy that actually producers were going directly to him after he was on the show one or two times because, you know, Fran, you'll be able to speak to this. Once you're on a TV show and you meet the producers, the producers don't go to the, the publicist anymore. They go straight to you. And he said he fired his publicist and now does it all in-house in and has uh, you know, administrative assistance and pub publicist assistance that he pays directly that gets on the phone and calls the producers that he has relationships with and they pitch ideas to them. And, and so I think that was the biggest mistake I made. I wish I could take my, my money back from that. But it's a lesson learned uh, that when you write a book, it's a publicity tool. It's an opportunity for you to get uh, direct content, uh, contact with the TV producers. Fran, I would love for you to speak on that. Absolutely. I mean, I don't want to put publicists out of business because they do a fabulous job. You know, usually at the celebrity level, when you get to a certain level, you don't want to be doing your own booking. Yes. But um, but as Alicia said, you know, I had the same experience where you're shelling out this money on a monthly basis for them to do, you know, what they do. But there were never any guarantees that you were going to get on the shows. Exactly. And so I'm more interested in, like, I, I will engage people who do pay for play, meaning we'll get you on the show and we'll, you'll pay us a couple of grand to get on the show. And if you don't get on the show, then you don't pay. I like that model. And then, as Alicia said as well, it's really about the relationships anyway. So once I started to get on television shows because of a book, quite honestly, then those people started emailing me and inboxing me and calling me directly. So we started doing it in house, and um, you know, fortunately, I didn't have a long-standing relationship with publicists. I would hire them on a per-project basis, but you know, if you can handle it in house and you're good at, at building relationships and you understand the dynamic nature of television, it's certainly something you can do for yourself. One of the things I, I told Alicia yesterday, when we were talking, was you know, the first thing that people say when they call me about booking an expert is, "Does she have a book?" Does he have a book? That's like the first thing they ask, even before they ask me if this person's been on television. Because they figure, okay, we can deal with whatever inexperience they may have on television, possibly. But if they don't have a piece of, there's something that lends credibility to what they're saying or they're going to say on our show, you may not get the booking. So I can't impress upon you enough that whatever demons or fear you have about writing a book, throw it out the window and just do it. Because it will come back to you sevenfold. Excellent. And I want to throw the question out to any of the three other panelists about, uh, about TV and what TV and radio opportunities they've had since writing a book. I know Leanne, you've appeared on TV. Unmute yourself. Sorry, guys, I keep forgetting that. Uh, just having a book really opened the doors, and I would say also um, I did. I was lucky enough to have a friend who helped me with with um, some PR, and she was well connected in the television industry. So, but I would say definitely to complement that, many of my TV appearances came from social media. One on a particular finance show came from Facebook. So once you have the book 
and you really do a good job of doing some viral marketing around it and getting yourself on Twitter, uh, the doors open. And obviously, I live in Toronto, so I'm in Canada, but um, it's even more difficult to get TV here because there's much less shows. So it's really, I don't think, I, I definitely wouldn't have gotten on TV without a book. So anybody who's thinking about it, just go for it. Okay, great, great. And so now I'm for a question. Um, Alicia? Yes. So I have not been able to leverage my book into TV yet, but I've had um, easily four or five dozen radio shows, um, mm -hmm. both uh, on well-known and non and smaller t uh, radio uh, shows. Um, interviewed. Um, I also was able to take the book and get publicity by um, uh, uh, press releases that were done through some services and got quoted on um, news services and uh, news shows all over the country. And that was that was very cool. And and they loved the fact that there is a book at the end of my name. You know, best-selling author of Fortune is in the follow-up. And I'm I'm very confident that no one would have paid one bit of attention to my expertise without the book. Excellent. So yeah, radio is definitely another viable uh, publicity option, uh, TV and radio. And, and with, with the internet, with there's so many podcasts and radio and there is those opportunities. So I want to ask a question for uh, the, uh, the panel uh, on maybe one surprise that they've had uh, since writing a book. How something like really special that's happened since you've get, gotten your book out into the world. I'd love uh, for you to share that with us. Fran, why don't we start with you? Terrific. I love this question because you know there are people out there who are thinking they can't write a published book like right that you put in your hand. But well, in 2008, when then Senator Barack Obama was vying for the Democratic bid against Senator Hillary Clinton. I wrote a book called Obamapreneur, an ebook called Obamapreneur. And I wrote that book because I was noticing how Obama was really kicking Hillary's butt, and it didn't necessarily have anything to do with him being a better candidate. He was doing it through social media, through branding, through innovative marketing strategies. So I wrote a book called Obamapreneur. It was a 30 page ebook. And I just started doing what all of these panelists know, just start putting it out there, Facebook, talking about it on my, on my Google channel, just different things. And I got a call from a booker to be on Cavuto, which is on Fox Business Channel, to talk about why President Obama, why then Senator Obama was going to get the Democratic bid for presidency off of an e-book. So literally, you see me on Cavuto talking to this guy. They flashed the cover, which was a very bad cover. I didn't even care. It was on, <laughs> It was a bad cover. It was like American flag blue, and then it had red writing. But he goes, Fran Harris, the author of Obamapreneur, never said it was an e-book, right? Just read the book, found it credible, and basically I analyzed his presidential candidacy marketing strategies. So if you're thinking that you can't get on local, national, regional television, you can. You just got to have some stuff in the book that really underscores that you know what you're talking about. But I love that story, and I love telling that story because I, I did when I wrote it. I thought, I mean, hey, just because there's it's between two sheets of paper doesn't make it any more credible. So we're just going to go with it. And it was all, of, of course, about the timing of that book and the the marketing that we did for that book. But I love that story because there really are no excuses at this point for anybody. Absolutely. I love that story because even I recently saw on Meet the Press, they had uh, two reporters who wrote an e-book. Because the thing is, things are happening at the speed of light. And it's about being a first to market with an idea. And so something might be happening and you could have you know, a lot of credibility, like being a Washington uh, reporter and write an e-book because it's something that needs to be addressed right now and you don't have 18 months. That's right. Great story. So Heidi, what's the one like surprise, something that's really zinged you since you have uh, uh, written the book? So um, after I wrote the book, one night, uh, a couple of months later, um, I was just closing up things on my computer and I had Facebook on in the background and somebody messaged, messaged me through Facebook asking me if I had really written the best-selling book, Fortune is in the Follow-up, if I was that Heidi Sloss. 
And um, it was kind of late at night, and I was thinking, is this guy, like, stalking me? Or, you know, what kind of weirdness is this? And I, But I did respond and said yes, and, and I quickly in the background Googled him so I could see he, who he was and that he was who he was saying, um, and he was legitimate. Anyways, he ended up booking me to speak in front of um, a mastermind group that he runs, um, and it happened to be local in the Bay Area. Well, there were people in that audience who heard me and participated in that keynote who then brought me to the attention of their the CEO of their company who then booked me and last year they were worth about fifteen thousand dollars to me alone so I, I just never believed that that anything like that could happen and people ask me all the time you know which social media should to be used and I gotta say I'm not a social media expert I, I know what's worked for me and everybody rants and raved about uh, rants and raves about how LinkedIn is so important and I think it is and I, I try to play there but Facebook has some really cool things that can happen to you there and that one uh, contact as I said led me to over 15 grand with one customer last year was was phenomenal um, so there are all sorts of great surprises and, and the big thing is if you've got a message in you and you're not putting it out in the world there are people who are suffering by not hearing it and it's like our gift to the world and I love Fran 30 pages you know how often can can any one of us rant on about some subject for 30 pages that that I mean that's just a piece of cake and uh, too many of us I think have great ideas in the morning and then we talk ourselves out of it before we finish our first morning cup of coffee and Amen. stop just stop pick up the pen pick up whatever tools you're gonna use write the book get it out there and 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 test it play with it I love that Heidi this is this the whole mindset thing and because we talk ourselves up so many things uh, so many ways on our, our journey to greatness. It's like, oh no, we can't do that. And we start making ourselves small. And so it's such a mindset thing, getting your mindset ready for success. Uh, so I want to share with uh, Chris, uh, what are some surprises that have happened since uh, writing your book? Absolutely. And I want to attest to the fact that what Heidi and Fran were talking about with even just ebooks, the, the credibility that can come from that. Because when I did launch my podcast, the first ebook, I was just using it as a little tool. I didn't think anything would really happen from it. And what happened is I have a podcast. And so a woman had found my podcast, was listening to it, and she has a large um, a large tribe. And so she emailed me. Um, she didn't sign up on my list. And she, she asked me if I had uh, a book to be able to send to her to give me more information on the what I do. And I sent her over my ebook that I had just written. It wasn't, it wasn't perfect. It was still missing some content, but I just sent it over to her because I had it already done. I'm like, here's the PDF. And we ended up doing a five-figure business transaction from that. And that's when I realized, you know what? It, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can get it out there. And that's where I, now I'm learning how to do it a lot better through what we've learned with the Best Seller Weekend with Alicia. But still, you can have it out there and still get traction and have people want to connect with you for, for your business. Absolutely. I love the saying, you don't have to get it right, just got to get it going. Uh, a lot of people are like, I got to get it perfect. And there's this whole analysis paralysis thing. And then nothing gets done. Yep. And getting it out there, getting it there is, is, so, is so important. You always can perfect it. I always say the, pro the process perfects. Uh, but even if it's if you get it out there as an ebook digitally, then you make some changes. I had a client who attended Bestseller in a weekend. She wrote her book, put it out there. Uh, and then Guy Kawasaki, who is a colleague of hers, read her book and was like, oh, I'd love to endorse it, gave her an endorsement, and then she's one of uh, the top Forbes bloggers, and, and Forbes let her use her, her image for the, for the cover of the book, and so now we're in, taking the book down and putting Guy, Guy Kawasaki's uh, testimonial and the Forbes in it image uh, as one of the top mommy bloggers and putting that on the cover of her book. So it wasn't perfect right when it went out, but because she put it out, Guy Kawasaki could read it and then endorse it. And Forbes magazine said, yeah, you can put the, it's, you get it going and then it's a process. It's like you get on this train of momentum and it, you keep on going forward. You don't look back, keep on going forward. And opportunities abound. Opportunities just come out of the wind. It's just an amazing thing. We are the ones who stop us. So. Thanks for sharing with uh, uh, Chris. And Leanne, any surprises uh, that have happened since uh, writing your book and 
having a baby was a surprise. I was surprised myself. <laughs> yeah, and he's uh, he's starting to scream in the background, so I might have to sneak out. But um, I guess what I would like to share about writing a book is every day an opportunity usually comes to your inbox when you have a book. So if can I think of any specific surprises? Well, I think it's just the ability to travel the globe this year with a five-month-old because one of the main reasons because I wrote a book. So if you're thinking of writing one, I will guarantee you that opportunities just, you attract them. Instead of having to hunt for them, you can just really just watch them attracted in your inbox. And I mean, just on this webinar alone, I had two um, requests to be on online summits. So there's just so many opportunities online. So I, I mean, it's every day, every day a surprise happens. Every day a surprise happens. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> Put yourself out there and then things come. It's like this, oh, it's amazing. It's life. Yeah. It's attraction. It's like always really cool things happen in your life. I know my book, I, I had a shelf gold digger back in 2007. I didn't really know how to monetize it. I was appearing on TV uh, and radio and then I'm like, oh, you know, what do I do with this book and how do I make money as a single mom? And, and what I did is like, well, let me pick up the phone. So with uh, writing gold digger, I picked it up the phone and I called Laurel Langmire and I called Christine Comerford and I called Marcin Steinhoff and I said, hey, do you guys want to do a seminar? I'm going to do a seminar on wealth creation for women and I'd love for you to speak. And, and they didn't know me from Adam. This was like pre-Facebook. This was back in 2007. I was just getting on Facebook. I was just getting on Twitter. Uh, and, and all I said to them, hi, my name is Alicia Dunham and I'm the author of the book. And Laura Langmar is like, yeah, sure, I'll be at your seminar. And she flew down on her private jet <laughs> to be my seminar. She didn't know me, but all I said was, I'm an author of this book. I sent her my link on Amazon. And then I said, oh, Marcy Shymoff, um, Laura Langmire is going to be speaking to my event. I would love for you to come too. And she said, sure. And then it just kind of waterfalled into all of these people. I had 13 speakers come speak for a summit that I did called Wealthy Girl Summit. And that was kind of how I was figuring out how I could monetize my book and then from there uh, really what happened is I started coaching some of the speakers who wanted to write a book. One of them was Alexis Martin Ely and I helped her, helped her write her book and become a bestseller and, and it just waterfalls like it's just like this beautiful thing and then it starts just like going into amazing opportunities and, and so from them I, I, then I started Bestseller to Weekend and that's where we here, are here now. We have Heidi who attended Bestseller to Weekend and Anna Maria Sanchez, who attended, and now they're speaking at a conference in Las Vegas. I know you're going to Heidi and Anna Maria just got back from the United Nations. I mean, how amazing is that? I mean, literally a year and 18 months later from writing your book, and you guys have are really speaking on a global stage. And Alicia, can I say something? Absolutely. So, in some of the circles that I travel in. Um, having um, uh, graduate degrees or a PhD matters, and I don't. I, I it just was not my thing to, to go on. Um, supported my husband to get two graduate degrees, but for me that was that was not my ro road to travel. But having the book and being able to say a published author is my uh, graduate degree. Uh, credentials and it really makes a difference and it's been able to allow me to get into places um, to sneak around so to speak having the graduate degree because I've got a published book and I think that 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 can be very big for some of us who who don't have the the initials after our name because we've learned from the school of, of hard knocks but having the book adds and, and, and elevates that so that people can have uh, an understanding and appreciation and, and, and a respect for for what I've accomplished even though I didn't attend a graduate school. Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't have that you don't have that debt from graduate school. <laughs> well, there's that too. <laughs> Good. So wonderful. So I want everyone um, to just as to say, you know, again what your name is and how people can find out more information about you. Let's start with Fran. Hey everybody, so Fran Harris, uh, thank you guys for joining us if you've been with us for the last hour. I'm the founder uh, and creator of Made for TV Academy, which actually launches on Monday, the 1st of April, no fooling. 
It really does. And I'm excited because uh, to, to have this opportunity because I know a lot of the folks who are watching are authors, speakers, experts, thought leaders who want to get their message out to a broader audience. And Made for TV Academy is all about getting your mug on television. So check out madefortvacademy.com on Monday. Excellent. Thank you, Fran. And Heidi? So um, people can find me. My website is, is on, under my face, www.heidisloss.com, or they can find me um, through Googling Fortune is in the follow-up. I uh, own the registered mark for that. And um, if you have a company or you're a sales agent for a company and you're looking for educational, inspirational, and entertaining keynote presentations, um, I'm your gal. Excellent. Excellent. And Chris? Thank you. My name is Chris Gilbertson again, and what I do is I teach uh, business owners and entrepreneurs how to broadcast their message through the power of iTunes and generating more free traffic, leads, and sales for their business by using the power of their voice. So if you want to learn more about that, I'm the founder of the Podcasting Pro System that takes you through step-by-step -step how to do that and craft your own world-class show, and you can just find me at chrisgilbertson.com. Excellent, excellent, good stuff. And uh, we had Anna Maria and Leanne uh, Graychuk here as well. My name is Alicia Dunhams, and if you go to bestsellerinaweekend.com forward slash book panel, you can find out more information on how to move forward and write your book. So you can achieve just what many people on this panel have achieved. So I have a special discount for you. If you go to bestsellerinaweekend.com forward slash book panel, Again, you learned today what the different, first of all, mistakes people made, how they overcame it, but also the successes, the what happens after it's done, all the opportunities you've heard from these particular uh, people, just a, really a handful of um, people, some of my clients, people, uh, uh, some of my colleagues have, who have written a book, and it's really exciting stuff, so I hope everyone who has this in there, who wants to take your business and your brand and your platform to the next level, I really hope that I can help you uh, do that. So you can go to bestsellerinaweekend.com forward slash book panel uh, to see that opportunity. And I really look forward to taking you to the next level. Because, you know, when it comes down to it, a book is a game changer. So I appreciate everyone on the call. Thank you so much for your time. And, uh, and any last words of wisdom? I'd love to just start with that. Fran? I like the I like the adage of you don't need to get it right just uh, just get it written. It's usually the start that stops most folks, and um, you know go out there and do it. There really are no limits, but it really will start with you putting your expertise on paper or on camera. So go for it, you guys. And Heidi. Yes. Um, so, Alicia, your first book, uh, Gold Digger, there was a, a phrase you used, and I quoted you actually in my book that I just love, and, and that is that you categorize people into two categories, those who do and those who do not. And I, I want to be one of those who do, and I, uh, I really couldn't stand the idea of being in a do not, and I want to urge anybody watching or listening to, to jump into the category of being a doer and uh, committing and think about it. Uh, Fran mentioned 30 pages, or maybe it was Leanne, I'm sorry, 30 pages for an ebook. That's all it takes. So uh, just be one of those who do and, and stop thinking about it. Absolutely. Good, go ahead. And Chris. And I want to give it a testament to Alicia. I actually went through her bestseller in a weekend last weekend. And what I want to attest to that is how it forces you to get things done and her process yeah, I'm a speaker so writing for me is very cumbersome that's why I podcast I like to just talk and so what's great with her process is she teaches you how to do that through using your voice and you record it and, and, and dictate it and it worked beautifully and the people that I partnered up with they were just transforming and blossoming when they were waiting to publish their book for seven ten years and they were able to transform it within literally a couple days and so it it um what's that law uh, the Herc i forget the law but it's um when you get it done when you set the oh, deadline Parkinson's. thank Parkinson's you I always mess that yes. up. yep when you set the deadline you get it done and this actually holds you accountable you get it done two days um so i just want to give you a huge round of applause and thank you for what you what you put together with that course because it really is revolutionary and phenomenal Oh, thank you so much, Chris, who just attended Bestseller in a Weekend. And just to reiterate Parkinson's law, Parkinson's law is that the amount of time that you give yourself to do something, it will actually take that amount of time. 
So for example, if you give yourself four years to write a book, it will take three years, 364 days, and 23 hours and 59 seconds to write that <laughs> book. If you give yourself a weekend, and you have the, the, the environment, the collaboration, what we do during Best Seller of the Weekend, if you give yourself three days, by golly, you will have your book done by day three because when you give yourself that time frame and you focus on it, that's what it takes. And you get your draft book manuscript uh, by day three because we do, we are procrastinators. We procrastinate naturally. And if we give ourselves years to do something, it'll take us years. If we give ourselves two hours to complete a task, it will take two hours. And, and that's what... Um, I love that you brought that up, and I think that's really true. So um, I want to help you focus. I want to help you take your business to the next level by becoming a published author, and you can do that today. Just go to bestsellerweekend.com forward slash book panel. Again, thank you for our panelists right here from Anna Maria. We didn't hear much about her. You can go to her website, which is freethelightwithin.com. Anna Maria Sanchez, freethelightwithin.com. We have Fran Harris, Heidi Sloss. Chris Gilbertson and Leanne Graychuk, who uh, went to go tend to her uh, new child, new boy. So thank you, everyone. And Thanks, Alicia. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks Bye. for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thank you.